time, you get our exceptional service guarantee and $50 off any plumbing repair. Visit McCarthyHomeServices.com. Tonight, we're live outside the White House. America has a new president. A day of history. The president-elect arriving at the White House this morning. President Obama and the first lady waiting. Both men then sharing the ride to the Capitol. Former Presidents Bush and Clinton and the president-elect's one-time rival, Hillary Clinton, all here to mark the transfer of power. As the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump takes the oath of office. So help me God. President Trump delivering his inaugural God. address, attacking the Washington establishment and offering a promise to Americans who have felt left behind. But on this day of history, amid the pageantry, the protests, police in riot gear clashing with demonstrators, protesters taking to the streets. And then the parade down Pennsylvania Avenue, President Trump emerging with the first family on his way to the White House. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, reporting tonight from our nation's capital. Good evening on this historic night live from Washington where we have witnessed the inauguration of the 45th president of the United States, President Donald Trump. Tonight, he and the first family are right here at the White House in the reviewing stand right behind me here on Pennsylvania Avenue. The parade nearing its end, then the inaugural balls tonight. The entire Trump family staying here at the White House tonight. And it all comes after a day of history and high drama here as former presidents and a former rival all witness Donald Trump take the oath of office. 8.37 this morning, our first glimpse of the president-elect Donald Trump, just hours from becoming the 45th president, and the woman about to become first lady, Melania Trump, leaving Blair House, headed to a prayer service at St. John's Church. The vice president-elect Mike Pence, hours from his swearing-in, tweeting this image from the front row. At the same time, President Obama's final moments in the Oval Office, seen through the window, leaving a letter for his successor. 9.42, the president-elect's motorcade arrives at the White House. A glimpse of what appears to be a Tiffany box inside. A gift for the departing president and first lady. President Obama with a greeting. How are you? A handshake and then a kiss for Michelle Obama. Melania Trump presenting that blue box, a gift from Tiffany. President Obama then reminding them their photo is next. Arranging their order. A smile and a wave before entering the White House for coffee. Tradition. Two families on the morning of the inauguration. At the Capitol, guests arriving, President George W. Bush and former First Lady Laura Bush. The Bush family did not support Donald Trump. The former president asked how his parents are doing after both were hospitalized. My parents are feeling better, he told reporters. Shortly before 11 a.m., President-elect Trump and President Obama emerging from the White House. They get into the motorcade, riding together to the Capitol. With millions watching on live television, at that same moment, Hillary Clinton, holding former President Bill Clinton's arm, arriving at the Capitol. After promising to attend the inauguration, a bruising campaign, she won the popular vote but lost the presidency to Mr. Trump. Walking down the steps, the camera right there, Secretary Clinton can be seen taking a few deep breaths before walking out and smiling. Clinton tweeting, I'm here today to honor our democracy and its enduring values. I will never stop believing in our country and its future. 1101, the president-elect arrives at the Capitol, greeting those lined inside the halls. 1105 is five children taking their seats. A big smile on Ivanka's face. She is moving to Washington with her family. Eric Trump saying to his wife, this is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The crowd begins to chant. And then the president-elect, Donald Trump, looking right into the camera and smiling. Melania adjusting 10-year-old Barron's tie. The president-elect of the United States, Donald John Trump. And then the oath of office on two Bibles. Abraham Lincoln's I, and the Bible John his Trump mother gave him as a boy. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. At that 12 I noon, Donald Trump becomes the 45th president of the United States. And then with members of Congress and his predecessors right there listening, 
Mr. Trump pledged to change Washington. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. Washington flourished, but the people did not share in its wealth. Politicians prospered, but the jobs left and the factories closed. The outgoing president right there. Mothers and children trapped in poverty in our inner cities. Rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape of our nation. An education system flush with cash, but which leaves our young and beautiful students deprived of all knowledge. And the crime, and the gangs, and the drugs that have stolen too many lives and robbed our country of so much unrealized potential. This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. And the new president with a promise. From this day forward, a new vision will govern our land. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. The time for empty talk is over. Now arrives the hour of action. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And yes, together, we will make America great again. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. God then the America. departing president kissing his wife's hand as they walk to the helicopter no longer called Marine One. The new president and first lady watching a final wave from President Obama, the 45th president, waving back. 1.10 p.m., the president signing his first law and signing for his official nominations, his cabinet picks, surrounded by family. Then, statuary hall inside the Capitol. President Trump arrives, Democrats and Republicans waiting. Among them, his one-time rival, Secretary Clinton, who he singled out. Because I was very honored, very, very honored, when I heard that President Bill Clinton and Secretary Hillary Clinton was coming today. And I think it's appropriate to say, and I'd like you to stand up. I'd like you to stand up. And honestly, there's nothing more I can say because I have a lot of respect for those two people. 3.30 this afternoon, the President and First Lady watch from the Capitol steps as the military honors its new commander-in-chief. Ivanka Trump tweeting, heading to the parade. And the parade begins. Along the way, the new first family getting out of the motorcade. The president and the first lady waving on their way to the White House. An historic day here in Washington. And as you saw there, we witnessed another first family say goodbye today. This image of former President Obama looking through the helicopter window, no longer called Marine One. After eight years, the White House he has now left behind. ABC Cecilia Vega with their final hours in Washington and the new president who thanked the Obamas for being so gracious. After eight years in the White House, Michelle and I now rejoin all of you as private citizens. Today, a goodbye and an introduction of sorts. President Obama's sign off came on his new Twitter account, POTUS44. How are you feeling? Feeling nostalgic? Of course. An exit from the Oval Office, then a kiss for Michelle as they waited to pass the torch to the new president. And tonight, two families, now close friends, are going their separate ways. The Bidens boarding an Amtrak train back to Delaware, just as he did for decades as a senator. 8,200 round trips, over 2,100,000 miles on Amtrak. 259 miles round trip a day. For the Obamas, a goodbye to the new first couple before boarding not Marine One, but now Executive One, and a last flyover above the White House. There was an emotional send-off from staffers and supporters before boarding that plane. This is not a period, this is a comma. In the continuing story of building America. 
and a promise for the future. I promise you I'll be right there with you. All right? God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, we did. Yes, we can. One more climb up those steps, and then a final wave. And Cecilia Vega is live with us here in Washington tonight. And Cecilia, uh, President Trump just left the review stand here, headed back into the White House, his new home, the people's home. Uh, hundreds of thousands turning out today to support the new president, the 45th president. But as you saw on social media, a lot of people pointing out the crowds compared to inaugurations past. Yeah, David, we saw ourselves too. And I want to show you some images. Take a look from 2009, a packed National Mall for Barack Obama. 1.8 million people there. Now take a look at that exact same image from today. We're being told hundreds of thousands of people out there. No official crowd count yet, David. But you and I were both out there all day. I was, we saw a lot fewer. We saw fewer people there. And the ball's still ahead tonight, and I know you're headed to them. Cecilia, I'll see you a little later on this evening. In the meantime, not everyone gathered here in Washington today came to celebrate President Trump's inauguration. Protesters lined part of the parade route, and in some parts of the Capitol, there were confrontations with police. And tomorrow here in Washington, a women's march and demonstrations planned across this country. ABC's David Curley witnessed the protests firsthand. The anger reaching a boiling point in the nation's capital after President Trump took the oath of office. Police in riot gear facing off against the protesters just six blocks from the inaugural parade. Unleashing pepper spray, concussion grenades, all to disperse the crowd. They've been using pepper spray out of canisters. So you have the bulk of the protesters right here, and here's the police line right at 13th trash cans, and then three vehicles set on fire. Two vehicles have been ignited. The fire folks have just moved in. Many of the protesters cloaked in black with their faces covered. The protesters had filled the street with several trash cans, and now police and fire are trying to move them out of the way. Earlier in the day, self-proclaimed anarchists smashed Washington storefronts with hammers. Across the country, there were other but peaceful protests in dozens of cities from Boston to Minneapolis, these people forming a human chain across the Golden Gate Bridge. And you can hear the choppers actually flying over, over us uh, tonight. David Curley joined us from Franklin Square. David, what's the scene like right now? Well, the crowd has largely dispersed, David. Just a couple of dozen still here, but police are standing their ground, standing their line with batons in hand. More than 217 protesters arrested, six police officers injured, David. David Curley with us live tonight. David, thank you. President Trump saying he is eager to get to work. His administration already taking steps to signal a new direction and promising action as soon as Monday. ABC's chief White House correspondent is right across the street tonight. Here's John Carl. A little over an hour after he was sworn in, the newly minted President Trump got down to business. Flanked by his family in the Capitol's aptly named President's Room, Trump signed a bill to clear the way for General James Mattis to lead the Pentagon. And then... Proclamation, proclamation. The President signed a proclamation making today a national day of patriotism. Mr. President, how are you feeling? Really great, thank you. There were tasks big and small on this day of transition, changing the license plates on the presidential limousine and the homepage of the White House. The digital transformation also included the presidential Twitter handle, the FLOTUS account, and the White House Instagram account. The first family will spend the night together in the White House. They say the first night you have your family there, it'll be very exciting. Trump's senior advisors say his first executive orders will likely involve renegotiating trade deals and scrubbing what he calls job-killing energy restrictions. I feel like Washington will have a shock to its system with President Trump. And John Carl live tonight across Pennsylvania Avenue here. John, President Trump's team has said the first major day is going to be Monday. It's going to be a big one, they say. What do they mean by that? Well, they're saying his first 100 hours are going to look like a traditionally first 100 days of a new presidency. I expect that will mean those executive orders will be signed the first on trade and on, on regulations. Also, he needs to kind of learn his way around the place. He says he's going to visit the major agencies. I expect, David, that the CIA will be one of the first. All right, John Carl at his post at the White House with a new president inside tonight. John, thank you. Late today, the Senate took action to confirm President Trump's first two cabinet nominees. 
But that is a small number compared to other incoming presidents, and it's causing real tension tonight between the Trump White House and Democrats. Let's go to ABC's Mary Bruce. She's live up on the Hill tonight. And Mary, who are the two nominees who have been approved? And what about the president's nominee for uh, CIA director? David, the Senate just approving General James Mattis for Defense Secretary and General John Kelly for Homeland Security. Just two nominees greenlighted on his first day. That's a far cry from the seven confirmations that President Obama got on his first day in 2009. And tonight, after some last minute wrangling, the Senate has decided to delay a vote on Congressman Pompeo for CIA director. That will now take place on Monday. David. Mary Bruce up on the hill tonight where she was all day today. Mary, thank you. And there is still much more ahead on this special edition of World News tonight. It is moving day here at the White House. No question about that. As one first family leaves the next.